In a short stretch of time from the mid-90s to the early 2000s, a relatively small group of people started playing around with this thing called the World Wide Web. They had the audacity to think they just might change the world. This project introduces you to the OG players from those hallowed days and lets them tell you what it was like and how you should have been there. Episode 15. Today we're going to be talking with Murray Hittery and Nova Spivak. They were co-founders of EarthWeb in 1994, early 1994, very early in this game uh, we all we all play today. So I'm really excited to have them on. Uh, we'll bring them on in a second. Uh, Ritesh, is, uh, he's got a day job and apparently he's got some important meetings, so he'll be here shortly. He's not going to be here. Uh, I mean, he'll be here. He's just going to be a little bit late. Um, for those of you watching, check out uh, youshoulda.com. You can see past episodes. You can see upcoming guests. You can get audio podcasts if you want to listen to these things live while you drive. Um, you can also leave comments here. So if you know Murray and Nova and you want to heckle them, you want to make fun of them, you can do that in the comments. We can do that. We've got the technology. And then finally, uh, because we want to be influencers, I think we've, we, we only need four or five more subscribers on YouTube to get our own vanity URL. So please, if you're watching, go to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and I, I promise once we hit it, I'll stop bugging you for this because I don't really care, but it would be nice to have a good URL for YouTube. Um, so with that, what I would love to do is bring on our guests of honor, <laughs> Gentlemen, oops, wait, what did I do? There you go. Murray, Nova, great to see you both. Hey, guys. Hey, Kyle. hey Kyle. <laughs> it, has, it has been many, many years. <laughs> yeah. How, how yeah, have you yeah. both been? Now, where are you both living? Murray, I know you're in L.A., and where are you, yeah. Nova? Same, L.A. You're, oh, you're L.A. as well. Wow. Yeah, actually, actually, we're married, and we live together now. That's fantastic. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't realize you had gone full Hollywood. Yeah, well, you know, some partnerships are just meant to last. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Um, I'm. I'm really excited to have you here. Um, you know, it, it's funny. I was. Um, you know, the 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 sort of time boundaries of the of the show kind of live from like '95 to maybe 2002. There's Ritesh. Let's bring him on. Good man. You, a, you have a nice haircut. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> That's quite all right. We were, we we uh, we let the world know you've got a job, and sometimes <laughs> sometimes the jobs take over. I know, and it's unfortunately the lawyers tend to wax on because they obviously need to earn their hourly. I was going to say, so, yeah. <laughs> hopefully you're still employed. Yeah, I was just going to say. This, did they promote you to global chairman now? No. Good news is I'm I'm employed. The bad news is I'm still employed. So. <laughs> 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 Another five years. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, nice to see you guys. Sorry I'm late. I'm, I'm so sorry. So all good. Yeah, it's all good. Um, but I was just saying the, the sort of range of the show is kind of 95 to 2000 and agency.com and Urban Desires started like November of 94. And I went and looked at both of your bios. I'm like, okay, let me go see when Earthweb and Earthweb, it looks like was founded in January of 94. Is that true? It was definitely early, for sure. Yeah. Very early. <laughs> well, I, let me think. Let me yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was very early. Because I remember, like, you know, we, we were sort of all new and all there. And, like, EarthWeb was always kind of there. So it makes sense because you were there essentially a year before everyone else kind of started piling on the uh, the hay wagon. Yeah. yeah actually, I, um, we started a little earlier than that with something else. You? Yeah. Oh, really? really? That, that was, the what, the precursor to EarthWeb? Yes, it was. Yeah, the origin yeah. story. Uh, wow, well, that's fantastic. Let's get into oh, it. That's timing. Yeah, we, we, uh, where we like to start here is what we call at the beginning. So, so, yeah. um, so who wants to go first? Go well, for it. How did you get started? It, really, it starts with Jack and Murray, really. Uh, Murray and his brother uh, were trying to start an internet company. Well, they didn't know exactly what that was, but they kind of heard that there was this internet thing. Meanwhile, uh, they were running. They were going around meeting with uh, companies that could host stuff on the internet. At that time, it was like Gopher. Yeah, it was like right. Gopher. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I, at the same time, was working uh, for a company that was doing 
news, a customized newsletters uh, for for Fortune, you know, one hundred biz dev teams uh, by fax. <laughs> um, so we yeah. were like gathering the, the news, the classic news rating. It was RSS, the first version by fax. Um, but so we're gathering knock, news, organizing it, and sending it yeah, up by fax. Don't knock the fax. It was a technological amazement when it arrived. Yeah, because yeah. before that, FedEx owned the world. Remember, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, and, and bike FedEx messengers in New York City. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what was their tagline? If it absolutely has to be there or something, yeah. right? That was their brand tagline, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So okay, so, um, so off your so, yeah. So, going. yeah. So they were they were going around meeting with people to try to figure out, uh, you know, what is this internet thing, and can we start? Should we start an internet company? And they were meeting with like somebody actually owned the domain internet.com back then. <laughs> uh, so they were meeting with that guy and, uh, and other people. And then um, around uh, around that time, we we hatched this idea. Um, well, why don't we start a company to put relief agencies on the internet? Oh wow! Um, so Murray, you want to talk about that? Yeah, and that came from reading an article. If you remember back in '94, early '94, there was the civil war, the strife in Rwanda. Oh and, right. Yeah, and yeah. we were reading all about, you know, the guerrilla activities and the refugee crises and and you know, there was a lot of information about the, you know, the battles and the, you know, and what was happening uh, with the killings, but there wasn't enough in our estimation about the relief efforts, like how people were really being helped on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. with water, food, supplies, medicine, all of that. So we reached out to the organizations that were on the ground. Um, so we're talking about, you know, the Red Cross, CARE, Oxfam, Save the Children, Lutheran Brothers, all these organizations. I remember speaking to all of them clearly. And we said, hey, why don't we help you get the word out about your efforts? So hopefully we can help bring some awareness and, and maybe even raise a little bit of money for you. And You're so like, we've got a fax machine. We've got we, newsletter technology. State-of-the-art technology. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, technology. And so we, we they said, well, uh, so the first question was, um, so what's the internet? And that was right. the first question in every meeting. And of course, we were the newly minted experts on this thing called the internet. <laughs> and so we, of Wait, course, how, 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 old how, how old were you guys? How how old were you guys at this time? So like I was 20, 22, eight, nine, you were like yeah. 24. Was probably right? like 20 something, yeah. Yeah. I was I had just graduated at NYU. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was 22. Yeah. Nova was 24. Jack was 25. I mean, you know, we're like running around and just, you know, drawing charts of the internet and showing yeah. diagrams. And they were like, like okay. uh, to the and, Red Cross and Oxfam. Uh -huh. right? And so uh, basically we hatched this idea called uh, ReliefNet. Yep. ReliefNet. Ah. And, um, and ReliefNet, the idea was we would create a site for charities um, where they where we, and by the way, this was Gopher. Okay? This yeah. was not the yeah, web. Yeah. Tim, Tim Berners-Lee <laughs> had not put HTML together yet. There were right. no pictures. There were no pictures. There were no pictures. <laughs> text. Text. So anyway, um, we would put these gopher sites together for charities and help them get the word out about what they were doing. And then we would get we'd help them get the donations by actually having somebody like contact us and we'd call them and you know, have them <laughs> fax something back and forth and eventually get a donation. And so we were gonna do online fundraising for charities. Wow. Um, how did you know? How did you know Murray and Jack? Through college friends. Some oh. college friends. Some college friends. And um, what what worked out well was that all these organizations uh, were either in New York, where I was living, in D.C., where Jack was living, because he was he had a uh, a fellowship at the NIH at the time, mm -hmm. and or they were in Boston, where Nova was living. So wait, and, so you uh, you were virtual before COVID? Way we before were, we were totally. We were virtual. like the first virtual team on the internet. <laughs> I love it. That's I awesome. love it. And I will tell you that it quickly became not virtual because <laughs> virtual. we realized that we needed to be together. So they both came to New York, where I and was. We moved into his two-room studio. No <laughs> way. Way. That's my studio, where all I had literally was a mattress on the floor and my upright piano. Yeah. Oh, there was a curtain. There was one curtain. There was a curtain. Oh, there was a curtain. I had a little futon where they slept. Yeah. <laughs> the three of us slept in this little studio 
I mean, for months on Amazing. end. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Was, was, was that was that was time. That was 93, 94. That was yeah. 94. Literally, yeah. there yeah. was you there was not actually floor space. You had to walk there like there was just this futon. Right? <laughs> there was another, I guess there was another futon, because I don't think Jack and I were really sleeping in the same bed. <laughs> but there were like two futons on the floor and then Murray's bed. And there was literally no floor space at all. Yeah. <laughs> the other room was the floor space. Okay? Yeah. The other room was just mattress. Yeah, I so, love it. And we just lived in that like one room for I don't know. Yeah, it was like probably almost a year. Wow. Um, and Murray was so pissed at me and Jack for, <laughs> for crashing in his place, uh, especially because Murray was a fairly active playboy, and uh, we just totally just put. Yeah, it he pretty much that. killed that game, huh? Pretty much killed it. Yeah, oh, it definitely yeah. pinges on your social life. I'll it really that. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah my I Jack and I hang out like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't, like <my> <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, we we will be in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So now, so so then, what? How did you shift from this gopher thing to to you know Earthweb and you know it was well, like Earthweb and internet company. Too. It didn't just immediately go from Gopher to Earthweb. It yeah. went from ReliefNet to our business model, which our big idea was: okay, we're going to raise money for charities, and they're going to we're going to take a commission. Right. right? We thought that was going to work, um, and then you know it turned out that that was not going to work. They were not going to pay us any commission, so this just became a volunteer effort. Ah. Uh, and but um, we convinced Warner Brothers Records to give us access to some upcoming albums and they gave us little audio clips so we made another site called uh, relief rock which was a benefit concert where you could listen to this stuff from oh, upcoming albums genius if you made a donation well actually optionally you could make a donation so we made this benefit concert on gopher <laughs> and uh and that got us into newsweek Wow! Yeah. yeah. Whoa. And Warner Music was actually they were they were pretty active in the early digital days. Yeah, like, they really were. They were yeah. A lot of the people we've talked to have done something with Warner. So yeah, yeah, yeah they, they were definitely super active. Wow. So so we did. So that. how did you get into Newsweek? It's well, they somebody covered, they covered Relief Net and Relief Rock. And That's incredible. And how they picked it up and and yeah. they wrote this whole column about us and we were on the map. And yeah. Wow. Wow. Then we and started then we getting like, calls. Yeah, and then we were like, okay, this relief stuff is great, but we think this internet thing is going to be big. What do you think? We're like, yeah, I think it's going to be big. I think it's going to be something, right? Yeah, yeah we thought so, we were going to do charity work, right? Yeah. right? Then we started thinking, huh, maybe we're going to make sites for businesses, for 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 profit businesses, go for sites at first, yeah. and then links. Links came out. Oh, links. Yeah, sure. I forgot about links. Yep. And then that something called Mozilla, um, still with no pictures. Yeah. Um, so Just, anyway, we started getting calls from ad agencies, primarily ad agencies. You know, what is this internet thing? We saw what you did for uh, these charities. Could you do it for our clients? Right. Um, and so we, you know, we started getting a lot of calls and we, you know, here we are crashed in New York in Murray's apartment. Um, and then we decided we needed an office. So, <laughs> um, so we, so Murray and Jack's family, um, have a, a beautiful, you know, multi-million dollar office in the garment district because they're in the garment business. Yeah. Um, and it's like a showrooms and all this stuff. It's called M Hittery, right? M Hittery and company. Well, Murray happens to be Murray Hittery, same initial. <laughs> now that's a different M, not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so we, what we would do is, um, you know, clients would come in for a meeting with us. You know, we'd move all the Jews and all of their garments <laughs> out of the way, out of the way, everybody out of the way. You Fabrics know, to the back. Back. Garment people, I mean, racks of clothing, Kyle. <laughs> racks of clothing. <laughs> we racks. So we'd be like moving the racks of clothing, you know, all the like the the garment people, you know, a certain group of people. Everybody out of here, hide, right? And then Jack, Mary, and I would come out in like our suits, and we'd be like, "Yes, it's M Hittery, and this is the M, right? This is Murray." You, right. you you would cart out your CRT mon your thirteen inch CRT monitor and your big yeah. big machine, plug it into yeah. the internet. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, <laughs> one minute like five minutes before, it was a showroom for like I I don't know like uh <laughs> like like, like brand, <laughs> branded sportswear for kids, right? <laughs> Next minute, 
you know, we're sell, we're trying to pitch uh, the New York Stock Exchange or the Met Museum of Art, you know, on our internet company, M. Hittery, with our multi-million dollar office, and this is M, as in Murray. And um, I love it. It I worked. Love it. it worked. It worked. I love it. Fantastic. They were like, wow, all these other internet companies are just, you know, <laughs> three guys in an apartment. But you guys have this, <laughs> have this amazing place. I yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get, we, we, at agency, we got lucky because, you know, Chan was working at Time Life and we ended up getting, you know, the dregs of the Time Life building. But, you know, hey. it was Avenue of the Americas, you know. Bad. So, like, you oh, want into a three story tall lobby. That's not bad. We also had, we had an admin assistant. I think we had like a couple of Murray and Jack's cousins and relatives. And then we had like an intern or two. Okay. We needed a desk, but they could only give us one cubicle in M. Hittery. So we had one cubicle with one chair with six people. So one person got to sit, and the other five had to stand. And we just sitting, like standing around this one desk in this one cubicle. And everybody else, the garment people, would be like, like looking at us like, what what is going what are those six people doing over there yeah you know, we yeah. were like the talk of the office like this weird group of kids you know the rest of them were all like older like you know yeah. experienced garment people they're like older doing their garment calls you know and then the, there'd be like the six of us in this one cubicle like super super active yeah clients coming in you know always moving their racks of clothing it was crazy totally crazy so that you're, was like very what did your what did your family Amazing. think of this were they generally supportive or the, did they just tolerate you well, my my dad, uh, who who of course ran the company, worked there. He had no idea what we were doing. He had no clue, um, and uh, he was just like, you know, okay, do what you got to do. And you know, we would turn I guess that place they're not over. doing drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Drugs. Come five o'clock. Yeah, five o'clock. Everybody would leave, and we just took over the place till midnight, till one in the uh, morning. We were working, yeah. right? So it was like this double life that was yeah. happening at the office. And by the way, there was actually a fax machine in my cubicle <laughs> that was constantly <laughs> spewing out faxes from Rwanda. Okay, oh, all man. these relief agencies. How were they going to get the information to us? The fax machine was spewing out <laughs> oh, press releases and updates. Which then we hired a programmer part time Manually. to scan, code up, put the <laughs> HTML on, and post it on ReliefNet. Wow. That's what we were doing to all hours of the night. That's now, insanity. That Nova mentioned insane. the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and <sighs> I got to tell you, that's one of the highlights of my memories of that time. Because we were like, who should be on the internet? This new web thing that has now pictures and text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And immediately the Metropolitan Museum of Art, one of the world's greatest museums, yeah. came to mind. And so we actually cold called them. And somehow we got to the office of the CTO. Yeah. And it turns out we found out later because when we went there for the meeting, the CTO said, how did you three guys even get a meeting with me? That's what <laughs> with it, right? No, but do you remember Arthur? I do you remember Arthur, Arthur Teasy. Yeah, and he said, how did you even get a meeting with me, right? And, we were, and it turns out, I found out later that his assistant recognized my last name from the high school we both went to by some coincidence. No. no. It's just one of those things, right? Wow. So put us in the schedule. She's like, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna put you in the schedule without even like asking him. And we show up there with the craziest demo anyone's ever done. We <laughs> went to the museum, we got their catalog, and Nova and I, we scanned every single image and we actually made a massive website, totally on spec. Oh, you spec you you pre-built it for the pitch? We yeah. pre-built the whole thing. We spent effortless, it was just incredible how much time we spend on it. <laughs> and we show up there with this whole demo with computer screens. By the way, no flat screens back then. It yeah, was no, we were lucky to be I remember them, yeah. <laughs> and we show up there, we give him this whole demo, and he looks at us and he's like, Who else has seen this? And he's like, you guys, you guys cannot just scan stuff in and like, make sure. <laughs> we're like, we just love the Met. And we ended up getting the contract. Wow. We built, we built metmuseum.org, which till, still exists till today. Wow. We built the world's first commerce site um, at scale for the Met Museum store. Yeah. I mean, it was just break, you know, breakthrough, groundbreaking stuff. And till today, it's the portal for the Met Museum and something I think, you know, we're really proud of. We actually had an office at the Met where we would go to scan all of their archives in. Oh, that's great. And it, 
we get we they actually could only walk give walls. us some, they could only give us some space in in one of the um, mummy uh, <laughs> caskets. So <laughs> we would just <laughs> yeah, good. that's good. I don't. Um, I mean that that thing of of going to the artist first. When I did Urban Desires, like the one of the reasons I did a, an art and culture magazine was the internet at that time was all like dissertations and scientific research and there was nothing resembling culture. So I feel like doing the nonprofit stuff, doing the Met stuff, Urban Desires, like one of the reasons we got seen was because no one was doing anything, you know, cultural or interesting. So fascinating that you started there. So when when did you do the Met Museum? Was it uh, pre-Earthweb? Was it still part no, of the no, that, was our, that was really our first big client of oh, Earthweb. Okay. That was that was your yeah, first big sort of yeah. big, big project for Earthweb. Because then then Earthweb became uh, the preeminent like web development you know shop in 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 the country and, and we we built all these multi million dollar web presences um, for major companies like the New York Stock Exchange Nova mentioned the Met Museum US West telecommunication companies right, 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 right. you remember Bertelsmann like the buy yeah. ten CDs for the price of one yeah oh, we, right right, we right. Put that whole business on the internet connecting it to legacy you know infrastructure yep. it was. You know, major technology integrations. So we here you are, three young guys running around Manhattan with relief net and you know all of this stuff. What made the shift, and what happened to the Rwandans? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, they, 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 you know, that that whole era of the whole Rwanda hunger crisis. Eventually, you know, it went through its whole cycle. Yeah. We we did help. I think we yeah. we also helped these charities understand how to get on the web. So that was yeah. actually very oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, great. Uh, and you know, we did actually raise some money for that. Um, but you know, we eventually that sort of fell by the wayside after mm. it served its purpose. Uh, and we started doing uh, commerce sites really originally mm. uh, and some media sites. So we did a, a big computer store. Uh, online for all kinds of computer software and, and products. We did, um, the Met was really our big breakthrough. Um, and that, you know, that was a huge project because we constantly had to keep re, uh, well, we had to keep saving our position because big companies like Microsoft and AOL at the time would come in and try to steal the business, right? They, they made uh, offer like and free, free. You know, free yeah. constantly. But we're fending them off every every week. So we would have to do things like, we made some kind of like app and we we went and on and and canvassed people on the steps of the museum like would you like <laughs> to use a website you know we'd have to you know to get to the the mat when you're not there we would do all these different surveys and things constantly proving you know and trying to stay one step ahead of these big companies that were trying to poach the client uh, and then somewhere during that period of time we we also got the new york stock exchange as a, ah. as a customer and we built their first website and put wow. them on and that was so after we did those two big projects um we started getting some notoriety um and we got there was an article in wired um called highbrow html house or something like that because we had our office was on park ave park and 33rd in this big big building you know so we were like the park avenue web development company and I you know clients would come in how big did the how big did your offices get? Like how, how many folks did you have at that time? I mean, we actually grew to a few hundred people. You know. Oh yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was big. Actually, we had about no. Eventually, we had about thirty thousand square feet. With I mean, yeah, probably about four hundred people at the time. Wow. You know, we how did you name it Earthweb? Where did the name come from? I, I remember brainstorming that, and uh, huh. basically, we were like, we want something to do with the web and the internet. And we want something global and big, you know. So, I mean, that was really, that was the that was the thought. It, I remember brainstorming it, and we just were like Earthweb, Earthweb, yeah, that feels good, and you know that that's what we stuck did with. Did you guys? Did you guys also do hosting? I I, I remember I you I guys remember did, hosting. Did hosting. Yeah. Did you hosting, or were you mostly web development? It was mostly I mean, web development. Were. Although I do remember Mark Cuban sitting in my conference room asking me to co-locate one of his boxes in our server room. You got to remember that there was no, you know, like, uh, yeah. like hosted companies, like really. It was, right. we had a server room with yeah, lots yeah. of servers where, where our websites were being transmitted from in our yeah. office. Like it's unheard of. the now. same thing at agency. We yeah. had exactly yeah. the same infrastructure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then it was our whole, little, our whole little Jerry Yang episode. Um, what was where, oh, okay, this Jerry, you know the Jerry, Jerry Yang episode. Jerry, Jerry found out that we had servers, um, and he was getting 
kicked off of Stanford's servers at the time. Oh, right, because um, he started yeah. all that on Stanford's yeah, servers. Using, using like too much of their yeah. infrastructure. <laughs> so he was trying to find a new place to put Yahoo. So Jack Murray, and, Jack Murray and I are like, oh, this Yahoo thing, this could be like a good idea. We should buy it. Right? Yeah, it's we like should buy it. <laughs> Damn it. And like, yeah, yeah, okay. So um, we made him an offer um, of $250,000, wow. which was like huge, you know? Yeah. And he was like, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, okay. And he went back, you know, talked to a couple people. And I guess it was like, we almost bought Yahoo for $250,000, but then somebody else came in and, you know, dropped the big money and that was it. Wow. But we almost bought Yahoo. That close. That's that pretty close. good. That's, That's pretty good. good. But well, how did Cuban found you? That's an interesting one. I never yeah, I didn't I know about that. Back broadcast.com those days. Yeah. 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 And then um, speaking so we of were, my father, so, so my dad, uh, who didn't understand anything, you know, cut to a few years later. So now cut from 94 to 98, mm. um, the three of us ended up taking – Earthweb Public, and I remember on standing on the trading floor of J.P. Morgan, who we were the first um, internet IPO for them. It yeah. was a it was uh, a big yeah. deal, and yeah. at that point they see you know the the stock opens trading, which by the way the market uh, for IPOs was totally shut down for about six months before that. Mm -hmm. um, but the three of us huddled and we were like, you know what, we want to push forward because we have a, the first B2B story, right? As opposed to, you know, Yahoo and Netscape. Right, all these and consumer eBay, things, yeah. Right, these were consumer brands that were public. So we yep. pushed forward as the first B2B story and and we, we broke back open the internet um, IPO scene and the, the stock, you know, went up. It was like, I think the third highest NASDAQ, you know, increase. It was a quite a day. Um, it went from, I think Nova, what was it? 14 to 40 something dollars or something like that. And yeah. uh, it was like a 256, it was like 256 percent increase yeah. on the first day of trading. And my uh, dad, but, who was with us at the first trade, my dad was like, I think I'm getting it now. Well done, son. Well yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> the internet thing's gonna be big. Um it, let it me was like us though too, right? Kyle, I remember when we went public at agency, right? 17 or 15 or something, right? Well, we, we it was priced at 26, and then I think the first public share was 98 or something yeah some poor guy somewhere you know <laughs> bought in at 98 i remember yeah. the ticker going across i was like holy shit yeah, yeah that was we were we were later because we were right before the bubble burst yeah. so you you it's were right, thousand, at, the, think, right at the beginning of it yeah because what ended up happening was you guys went and then there was a, a lot of companies sort of getting in line. And then the SEC was kind of freaking out because they're like, wait, we got to change these rules. So we were trying to go public for about a year and a half and the yeah. SEC kept changing the rules. So we had to keep going back and starting the paperwork over. So yeah, right. that was crazy times. What, um, talk to me about, um, the, one of the things we like to talk about is, you know, what was something that you guys built? I think that the Met one is one that, that's, that's really amazing. cool. But, but what's some stuff that you guys built or had your hands on that you were like, holy crap, this is amazing. I can't believe we're doing this. Like, you know, well, what were some of the innovations you, yeah, you were working well, on? I mean, there were several things. First, it was just building, you know, a, a commerce, an integrated commerce site with, you know, locations all over the country. You know, yeah. it was a true systems integration project connecting the web to mm. actual you know, inventory control and back office and shipping and all the different infrastructure of the web store, which is nationwide. Um, and who, that was that really, who was that for? Sorry, that was for the Met Museum originally. That oh. was the early, early commerce site, but it was a real systems integration project because they actually had a commerce business with, you know, warehouses and shipping and inventory and, you know, their whole, their whole um, billing system. Everything had to get integrated. So that was the first time that anybody had ever really done that. Mm -hmm. um, but... But after we built that, the next uh, thing we worked on that was significant uh, is we worked on some early interactive TV technology. Oh, yeah. Um, with, what was that, uh, 1998? Oh, it, it was early. Yeah, TV maybe show. even early. I can't remember. It was earlier, maybe. But what it was was we, we came up with a way to, um, with a video card in your computer, synchronize information being pulled from the web with what was appearing on the video. And we actually patented it. Um, it, it was basically synchronizing little codes that were on the VBI part of the video signal. Yeah, that little thing at the top, right? Yeah. So it was before web TV. 
for example. Wow, um, cool. And so we met, we built that, and that was pretty cool. The next big innovation uh, was around Java. And what mm. happened was a couple of my friends, I used to work at Thinking Machines in Cambridge, and a bunch of those people, um, when Thinking Machines was acquired by Sun, those people became part of the Oak project, which later became Java. Java. And yeah, right. so yeah. um, what happened was I found out from them about this Java thing uh, about six to eight months before the rest of the world knew it was happening. Mm. And the whole point at the time, the whole big benefit at the time of Java um, was that you'd be able to move some of the computing to the user's device, right? Instead of oh, having nice. everything happen on the server. Yeah. Um, so the applet concept was really the big point. And this was kind of even before, uh, you know, um, things like, uh, you know, other rendering or animation, um, on the on the browser, this was this was going to be the big solution to push uh, some of these high bandwidth things to the browser to to allow for higher level multimedia experiences um, without bandwidth constraints. Because at the time, people were still you know using modems or they were yep. using early early broadband. You know, the, most mm -hmm. people didn't have it, and so yep. you know there was a big big issue with trying to do any kind of video or anything interactive or fast. You know, other than just clicking GIFs, right? right so. Right. Um, so that was what we thought it was going to be for. And so we started talking about it with a lot of our clients because we were essentially an agency. Um, so we were telling all of our clients that soon they'd be able to do these new kinds of experiences and we wanted to prototype and start some new things. Um, and we got them interested. And then the first Java day was actually in like, I think October. I can't remember what year it was in New was York. Was like Java one or something they used to brand it? Even before oh, yeah. that, it was called Java day. Java there, was day. Oh, wow. there was an announcement, maybe it was Java one. It was like the very first announcement of Java in New York. We were there and uh, you know, it, they were sort of Sun Microsystems was showing what it could do and everybody was, oh my gosh, wow, you know, whoa, you can like do this stuff on the browser. It's not just a GIF. Yeah. Um, and we immediately <laughs> came up with this idea to create a site all about Java to aggregate and collect and share information for the world about this technology that we thought was gonna be the big thing. And we couldn't find any coffee names to buy. There were no coffee ah. domain names left. So, Murray. <laughs> and and so, so, then, Murray? <laughs> so, of course, with uh, with my music background, we, we turned to musical uh, references. Ah. And, ah. and so, uh, the island of Java is known both for coffee, but also for the Gamelon Orchestra. Uh, Which we yeah. played in, and so did I. We both right. actually, at one point or another, each were in a Gamelon Orchestra briefly. Wow, really? Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So, we, so we, we, we named this website, which was a collaborative website, just like the Gamelon Orchestra is a collaborative musical yeah. ensemble. We, we called it Gamelon. And Gamelon was the place on the internet for anyone wanting to learn about Java, share Java applets, share Java code, and uh, and that was the home for it. Soon so what enough, do we call that today? We, what do we call that today? We call that GitHub. open source. Yeah, GitHub. yeah. yeah. Early GitHub. GitHub. Wow. Look at that. Everybody would put up their code libraries and examples, and you could download it and customize it and use it, and, and it was like this really thriving. It actually became one of the top 50 sites on the web in its first year. Amazing. Right? And everybody thought it was called Gameland. Yeah. Um, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course they did. Yeah. Uh, Agency, Sun, Agency. We built one of the early Java sites for Sun. So we had Sun as a client. And I yeah. just remember we did all these. It was all that that light purple and white yeah. branding. I just yeah. remember making all these different icons of, you know, coffee yeah. icons and things like that. Right. And, and little, yeah. little animations, you know, showing off the Java capability. Yeah, um, exactly. And, and from there, Sun became a sponsor. Uh, we then got all these tech companies to become advertising and sponsorships. Uh, I remember sitting with Eric Schmidt when he was at, um, uh, uh, what was it? SGI or Novell, I can't remember right now. Maybe it was uh, at SGI. Novell. Yeah. Oh. And, yeah, I think and he was so, at Novell. Yeah. <laughs> Novell, Novell, yeah, and and so I, I remember meeting with him, and he became a, an advertiser and sponsor um, at the time, uh, and and many other companies did. We then said, well, if Java folks need this centralized uh, source code place, well, what about 
other programmers, like, you know, yeah. folks doing stuff in, you know, in, in other languages, C++, et cetera. And so we just started to make other websites. And that's what we actually took the public, took the company public on. Uh, it was not wow. as an agency. It was, not, it was not as a web development shop. It was actually as a media company uh, with these small and growing, fast growing websites. I think when we went public, there was, you know, upwards of a couple of million of users that we had on these, you know, of technical users. Again, not a consumer play. This is more of a B2B play. Uh -huh. and, and that's what we did. And then after we went public, we spent, you know, the, the next 18 months acquiring upwards of 20 something companies that had different pieces of the puzzle and we aggregated and built, you know, the largest tech community on the internet. Wow. And how much was it, what was the balance of sort of media versus community interaction? Do you, were you, were, was it more about the community or more about the content? Well, Nova, don't, don't, don't forget about Chat Planet, Nova. Remember that? <laughs> oh my gosh. I forgot about that. Wait, we, no, we built, seriously? Yeah, we built Chat Planet, which was the most advanced chat capability on the internet. And wow. You can come and create your own room. <laughs> And you can have your own conversation, and you you know it was all this um, chat activity. It was, it was uh, like Twitter, basically, yeah. but like fifteen years before Twitter. Yeah, wow. And so that was that was. Um, but you yeah. know, basically, it was it was bringing this community together, and then and then what we then realized was well, what's the most profitable model of any media company, like you know any newspaper or any media company? Well, it's always the classified the advertising, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we said, well, let's let's open a job board for these techies. Oh. And as we were about to build a job board, on my radar comes this fledgling little company called Dice.com. Oh, yeah. Which was based in Des Moines, Iowa. And they only catered to recruiters. So the only people that can post on Dice were headhunters and recruiters looking for tech people to then place at Microsoft, to then right. place at a tech company. And so I approached them, one thing led to another, and we actually acquired the company. I think they were doing about 3 million in business at the time, uh, but highly profitable. And once we put it on this larger platform of EarthWeb with all of our millions of users, uh, we then opened it up to not just have tech, to, to tech recruiters and headhunters on there, but companies can directly post. Wow. So now Microsoft can directly post. Now, of course, it threatened the tech recruiters and they, you know, screamed and they were, you know, like, oh, we're going to leave if you do that. And of course, it was a little risky and scary because all of a sudden all that money can evaporate. But we took the chance. It was a logical step. Yeah, yeah. And the, 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 the company went from about three million in revenue to 60 something in the matter of a year and a half. Wow, that's amazing. But it just it just was an incredible move. And and a testament to all that we built, starting with that idea of Gamelon that Nova had from that Java day and and then you know just building out that whole network. So it was quite a run and quite a story. And all that, by the way, leading up to right the the bubble bursting just some, yeah. you know, two years after we went public. Oh, uh, let's but, not forget, let's not forget um, the fashion internet. We did oh a whole, gosh, all the fashion designers, you name it. It was like Donna Karen and Calvin Klein. Everybody was in that. They would come into our office, you know, and we'd look at them and say, look, for the most expensive web company in the world, if you're not willing to spend at least a million dollars for your website, get out. <laughs> and it worked. It, uh, it worked. Yeah. It's it the, the velvet rope. The velvet <laughs> rope works. We had the same strategy at agency.com. If it wasn't a million, don't even call don't it. Even right? it. Don't, don't even think it. about it. Well, but let, let, think about this, Carl, on the innovation side and listening to this conversation. And, the, and I had no idea. So – Early Twitter, early Indeed and Monster, yeah. early, you know. You had to uh, roll it yourself. Look at this stuff. And, you know. Well, the, the thing that strikes me also is it's like every business that you've done was sort of the, the evolution, the next, you know, evolution of the thing you had done before. Like it feels like these things sort of flowed naturally from one to the next, which which I found amazing. So let's continue <laughs> that, that model because, you know, like I, I, you two still obviously know each other. You're living in the same city. Um, Wait, where's Jack in all this? That's the first question. Oh, I mean. Jack, oh yeah. 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 What Jack happened to was, Jack? So Jack yeah, was Jack. very much there. Um, oh, okay. I mean, Jack was the CEO. Um, so kind of the way way it worked was 
Jack was the CEO and was the sort of the finance guy. And, you know, Murray was um, the head of sales and, and operations and biz dev. Um, and so he was really the one selling everything. And then I was really working with the product team building stuff. That's kind yeah. of our division of labor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so Jack was raising the money, which he did a great job on. I mean, raised quite a bit of money. Yeah. Um, and, you know, eventually got Warburg Pincus and other big investors to back us. And actually, it's because of Jack that, you know, we actually went public. So right. Jack was doing that. He was building the actual company from a financial yeah. Yeah. standpoint. Yeah. And Murray was running the business and I was running the products. Interesting. Yeah. So that's kind of how you kind of look at it. And uh, Jack was super, super active. And, and Jack, you know, is quite a character as well. Anybody who knows Jack knows that. You know, he's he's a kind of a little bit eccentric genius. Yeah. You know, who would do things like show up to <laughs> meetings with the CEOs of, you know, Digital Equipment Corporation uh, that day. For some reason, he forgot his wallet. So he just brought all the contents of his wallet in a lunch bag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. So, pen uh, broke, so there was a huge big, his pen was like leaking out onto a shirt. <laughs> in the meeting. <laughs> okay. So, I love so, it. Talk to me funny. about um, <laughs> what have you what have you carried forward? It, it, Nova, I know you're doing. I went and looked at your LinkedIn, and I, I was scrolling. There were so many companies, and and four of them you're active in. So so you're you're doing that, Murray. I know now you're doing music. So you've both kind of had these interesting things. I'd love to hear, you know, from those early days, what carried forward from from you? Like, what did you learn being a part of that 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 you feel is carried forward? And, and sort of how did that evolve into what you're doing today? Yeah. Um, well, for me, the one thing I loved about tech, and you got to remember that I was a music major, right? I played music since I was five years old, and I ended up being a classical composition major. And so now a year later, I'm in this internet company, knowing zero about coding, about tech, barely can turn on a computer. Um, I learned quickly. And I was, but I was very threatened by the programmers and you know all their <laughs> capabilities. It turns out that when I started to talk to the programmers and get to know them, most of them actually played music. Um, right. You know, Patricia, one of our programmers, played the piano and the, or the violin, and you know it was really a beautiful connection. And if you look at what our companies actually did, at the end of the day, what our companies actually did, especially with Gamelon and all those websites, they were connecting people, bringing mm -hmm. community together, right? Like so many of our businesses, right? And that was the promise. That was the why it was so exciting to be a part of this thing called the internet. Yeah. And to me, that's a core value. Like I grew up with that kind of need for bringing people together in community. And cut to today, going back to the music, which has been so fulfilling to go back to, it's about bringing people together through music. And that kind of theme of connection and community has really carried through for me very profoundly. That's huge. That's I, huge. I think Eric Walinski, who was on one of our lead tech guys at agency, was an amazing musician. So he used to talk the same way with you, Marie. You know, he said, I, I visualize these things in my head as I'm developing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, I remember one of my early insights about HTML, I'd written a bunch of screenplays, and one of my early insights about HTML is how you structure a website is almost identical to how you structure a story, which is almost identical to how, to, how you structure music, right? Like, there, there are very much parallels. The other thing that's been a theme in, in these shows is – just the multidisciplinary nature. Everyone was coming from some different background and it was often the arts or, or liberal arts where, you know, people could kind of go left brain, right brain, right? Where, where you were, you could code, but you could also look at things creatively. How about, how about you? Yeah. I've got a lot of memories with Nova, you know, Nova and I, our offices were literally right next to each other, like with a glass wall in between, like we could see each other all day. Mm -hmm. And um, Nova was really influenced by Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetan meditation oh, right. yeah. from a very early age. Um, and I was also through my martial arts, through Aikido, uh, through studying Zen Buddhism. So different traditions, but also had a real passion and interest in Eastern philosophy and Eastern meditation. So we had a tremendous commonality, you know, through through that mechanism. We tried to get Jack to meditate at those in those years. But it, just, <laughs> it didn't uh, work. Didn't work. <laughs> but by the way, I, I remember, uh, you know, and by the way, before, te before Tesla became a household name, 
Nova was Tesla's biggest advocate and uh, and taught me about Nikolai Tesla. Nikola, yeah, actually, yeah, the real Tesla. Yeah. The real Tesla. The real, the real, real. Wow. Tesla. Really? Uh, Nova, if I may, I'm going to tell the story about oh, going into your office. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. And, this and, we have to hear. Yes, we I have remember, to hear. I remember walking into Nova's office and uh, had to ask him a question. And I opened the door and I see him meditating with his eyes closed, holding two electrodes. <laughs> and, and he was he was somehow channeling the circuitry of some electric it's Tesla low. machine. Yeah, I, I was building. We were like building these machines and like putting electricity through our body to like see if we could amplify <laughs> it was craziness back then. <laughs> no I was that. like, uh, I'll come to you my I'll be down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other half of my body actually isn't there anymore. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You did a little time travel no, uh, uh, experiment. Exactly. What's been yeah, nice is that a battleship, I'm like embedded into the side of a battleship. Yeah, exactly. What's been um, nice, though, is that all these years later, Nova and I still connect through meditation. We've meditated together, and and that meditation influence is now part of my music expression with mind travel. What I do now, right. and I know Nova is is still very much um, connected with meditation in his you know in his world. Yeah, no, so, no, what you, no. yeah. What did what did what did you bring forward from those days? <laughs> well, I mean, I I think the first thing is that I mean. Pretty much everything I know about business or learned about business, I learned from Jack and Murray. Mm. Um, they they kind of grew up in a in a family that was building businesses, and so like they taught me basically everything I know about that. Um, and from there, learning how to incubate and build companies, I went out and started doing that. Um, so I ended up um, starting some incubators and, and getting involved in a lot of other projects after after Earthweb. Um, including working with SRI and being part of the team that did the early research that later became Siri on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, after that, uh, many other companies, clout.com that I helped start. I was the first investor there. That was an influence uh, measurement company. Yeah, they, they um, got big for a while. Yeah, and then uh, a bunch of things around streaming and analytics and uh, visualization, all of which came from our Java work in the early days. It's just the yeah. same thing again. Yeah. Um, and uh, so a lot of that stuff that we did in the early days, we ended up redoing in ventures later. Mm -hmm. um, how did you how did you make the transition? You, you were doing the sort of product side of things, building side of things. You know, now, now you're CEO. You know, when did you feel like you made that transition from doer to executive to CEO? Or, you know, I mean, what was that journey like? In the early days, even though we had the division of labor, I mean, we kind of all did everything. There was It wasn't like I was only doing technology and they, they weren't. I mean, we were all in pretty much everything, but we specialized where we had our strengths. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, after that, having the experiences that I had, you know, for four years from zero to big IPO, you know, I did have enough cre credibility and experience to start some companies. Um, and I went and did that. Um, and I over the I think over the last couple of decades, I've kind of realized I don't really like being the day to day operating CEO. I've mm -hmm. kind of come to the conclusion that <laughs> I don't really like that too much, um, you know, because I actually like the product side of the business more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, and, you know, it's probably not that it's not my strength either, but I know enough to do it in the early stages of a company. But at a certain point when you're in like operating mode, sales, balance sheet, it's better to get an operator. And, and I did learn that. But um, what I've really done in my career is just focus on early stage innovation, primarily, um, where it is my strength. And um, and that's actually now led to many other areas. We have a pharma company, a chemistry company in the energy space as well. Uh, we have an anti-counterfeiting technology, a nanotech-based uh, technology, and then um, VR, AR. I actually have many of the early patents I developed in 2008. Uh, and then um, space, where uh, we've been working on nonprofit stuff in space, uh, archiving civilization in space uh, using nanotech. So we crash landed wow. the Wikipedia on the moon a few years ago, and we, we're actually sending it back this year. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, so we're going to be landing the Wikipedia on the moon uh, at the end of the year. Again, trying again, second attempt. We got it all up there, but updates are a bitch. <laughs> yeah, the updates are a bitch. Yeah, it's a lot like the old internet, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? They might put a fax machine up there, so you never yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The updates are a challenge. We have to send yeah. them. You know, you, on, yeah. 
Nolan yeah. Keeble, the guys at Hyper Giant in in oh Austria, yeah yeah so ben there's Lamb and his crew yeah. right and right. they're sponsors of ours and friends of ours okay um, so Ben yeah so Ben Ben is involved we've partnered a bunch good. of things. Um, yeah, yeah, he's been part of our missions, our different missions. Yeah, he's a good friend. He's uh, a good friend. Yeah, it's it's uh, a shame. It's a it's shame though, Nova, that you didn't maintain any of that ambition from the early days. <laughs> you know, it's you know, like you've only got me. ten companies. Like, no, it's I, you know. me. It's yeah, I, I never worked again. I just I, I I decided to hang out on the beach and that was yeah. it. Since then, I mean, exactly. nothing, nothing at all. But it is it is quite fascinating though that you have continued that uh, that entrepreneurial. Yeah. leading edge sort of you know let's go figure that out go figure that out you know yeah. it is when we when we talk to people a lot of us from those times continue that curiosity that mm -hmm. how can i push that envelope right murray in the music that you're doing some of that journey stuff that i saw not recently you know recently it's very innovative pushing, yeah right? murray you know I mean, he studied with philip glass he's he's a protege of philip glass yeah. and uh, yeah. he's got real history yeah. what's the What's no, the, yeah, I was just going to yes, add. I was just going to add to that that um, you know when I think about that notion of continuity from the early years, um, ideas and you know kind of all that is certainly carried through. More importantly for me, really, is the human side of it that's yeah. carried through. Yeah. And I'm sure that's the same for you guys. Like yeah. I look back, I mean, there are people still working at companies I'm involved in from. The Earthweb days. Yeah. Um, you know, there's like, for instance, our CTO in some of the current ventures was with us as a junior novice programmer at Earthweb, right? Yeah. And it's now 25 years later. Right. Uh, and that's true. You know, there's people who have been, you know, with, with me, with us for 15, 25 years. Um, and also on the personal side, not just work, there have been so many kind of Earthweb marriages, Earthweb relationships, yeah. Earthweb babies, right? Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of beautiful to to see that, um, you know, and even, you know, uh, my relationship with Nova today, all these years later, you know, Nova ended up marrying, you know, a friend of mine. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and he met her uh, through a beautiful act of friendship generosity. Nova was visiting me uh, when I was going through my most difficult time and Jack's most difficult time. We, our, our little sister who was 23 died suddenly tragically and nova came across the country he flew across the country to be with us during the shiva the which is the jewish mm -hmm. period of yeah. mourning yeah. and i remember sitting with nova and another friend of ours jimmy uh, one of my closest friends uh, at a starbucks near my parents house in brooklyn and we were just talking about life and nova was like hey you know what i'm ready for a relationship and um here's what i'm looking for blah 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 and jimmy and i were like hmm okay uh <laughs> next, next thing we knew he was he was dating our friend Kim, and now oh, they're married oh, and have a beautiful daughter together and a beautiful life together. They're best friends and have an incredible, incredible world they created. And it's that kind of continuity, right? Yeah, that yeah. is ultimately the most important, uh, you know, in, in, in life. So I totally huge. agree with you, Murray. I mean, when yeah. we, we do these reunions now and again, and you know, Cal, go. What do you think? 10, 15 people. I mean, last one. What did we have? We had, I don't know. Hundred. Hundred. <laughs> yeah, two hundred people. I don't know. It was a yeah. lot. All yeah. very close still, all staying yeah. in touch and hanging out and, you know, and they've all done very well as well. I think you, that's the other bit. Uh, you, it's probably the same with you guys, right? It's not the the very well in terms of riches or and some have, but it's the life that they've led, the places they've gone, the, yeah. the, the jobs they have now, right? It's incredible what that era brought together, I think. I don't yeah. think that you'll ever create that again. Yeah, well, in, in to a great degree, that's why this show exists. Because when we did the 25th uh, anniversary of Agency.com in the Indian restaurant, you know, in in Lower well, Manhattan, we could hold 50 people and yeah. 200 showed up. <laughs> yeah, well, jammed in, but but it was it was like the commonality was like you know I've spent my career trying to recreate the magic we had yeah. back then. Like like the thing that we we all collectively shared. I think partially because it was a time in history partially because it was on that island of Manhattan where it was super concentrated, but it was, it was just a magic time. And, and yeah, the relationships really do seem to be the things that have endured. The, you yeah. know, there was a real innocence and a purity to that time. Yeah, there um, was. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, now obviously there's new, there's new industries, there's cryptocurrency, there's new yeah. things happening, 
But you know, this was pre 9-11 when we yeah. built all this, right? Yeah. yeah. In just in just a few years before 9-11. Yeah. And there was just a different like mood in the world in the country back then, which really did shift, in my opinion, after 2001, after 9-11. And uh, you know, I recently you know caught up with Jerry Mikulski some years ago. Oh yeah. Who, you know, Kyle, that's where we used to mainly see each other was at yeah. his retreats every year, right? Exactly. Yep. You know, and and I, I you know, I, I didn't see him in, I haven't seen him in, you know, I hadn't seen him in maybe 15 years, but we picked up right where we left off, you yeah. know, and and it was just so, there was just so much affinity because of those days yeah. and what we were all trying to figure out through, again, that curiosity you mentioned. That's right. That's yeah. right. Nova, where are you now? Are you, st are you in California now? Yeah, I, I'm in Los Angeles as well. Okay. And um, yeah, I live here with my wife and kid. And, uh, you know, I've been working a lot on, a venture related to um, COVID relief. So we, we've been doing a lot of work um, trying to help uh, get large amounts of um, PPE to government and hospital buyers. And, and we built a marketplace for these uh, deals and I've been working a lot on that. In a funny way, kind of going towards the roots uh, of the garment business where we started Earthweb. Now I'm learning all about uh, production and manufacturing. The industry. Yeah. Yay, there you go. <laughs> so, so, Murray, Murray has some people you can talk to. Yeah, Murray yeah, exactly. yeah. So, How ironic. How ironic. Manufacturing <laughs> and, manufacturing and, and production and Chinese factories. It's exactly what oh they were all God. doing when I met them. Yeah, yeah, so, very, so very funny. Wow. Well, guys, Murray, where are you now? Uh, I'm in LA as well. You're in LA as well. Okay, yeah. nice. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Guys, listen, this has been absolutely incredible. Like, you so know, much fun. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on, but it's just amazing. Like, you know, thanks for bringing energy and just being so generous with, with what yeah. you shared. And, and you guys, too. It's great to reconnect. Thank yeah, you. Likewise. Thank um, you. Please, please send our love to Jack. I'm, you know, sorry yeah. he couldn't be here, but he's he's here in spirit. He's, yep. you know, the spirit he's animal. Out how to the leaky pen. Leaky pen. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hang on one, just one second. We'll uh, we'll end the broadcast here, and I'll I'll check back in with you.